This tutorial is going to provide the basic steps in making a capture using the LaCroix Voyager protocol analyzer with USB 3.0 devices. Now, the Voyager sits in between a real host and device and connects over standard USB 3.0 cables. Devices can be powered off when they're attached to the analyzer, or they can be hot plugged. With hot plug, you'll hit record on the analyzer and then attach the devices. The devices in this case are already powered on. After installing the Voyager software, you'll go to the LaCroix item in the start menu and start USB protocol suite. This is the main application for controlling the Voyager analyzer. We're going to start by clicking the recording options. This interface allows you to specify the type of traffic you want to capture. For example, the equipment does support USB 3.0 and 2.0 simultaneous recording. You can specify whether you will use an event trigger or snapshot. And of course, the buffer size, you can specify up to 4 gigs, but for a simple demonstration, maybe 20 megs will be fine. We'll start with a snapshot recording and then come back and show you a simple trigger. But first, let's take a look at the USB 3.0 tab. Here you want to make sure that you've selected Analyzer only in order to use the Analyzer ports on the Voyager system. You can optionally specify whether you will use the 3.0 connectors or optional SMA type connection. You should be able to leave the rest of these settings in their default or auto mode. You click on the OK button. I'm going to go ahead and hit record and then attach the device to the analyzer itself. As soon as I do that, you'll notice down below that the buffer fills up with data. The white bar indicates the upload process of actually moving traffic from the analyzer to the PC. And I'm presented with a display that shows the very first packets on the wire. You don't see every packet number because I've set the software to hide some of the more redundant events in USB 3.0. As you scroll through this trace, you'll notice there are large stretches of equalization traffic. That's the equalization symbols that devices are sending during link bring up. Eventually, you get to a point where you see logical USB 3 packets. Here's a data packet sent from the host or downstream facing port. The analyzer captured this at super speed, so it says SS. If it were a high speed packet, it would say HS. I click to select this packet, and the detail view provides additional information about the header fields. By clicking on any triangle, I can open the packet and see more fields that are not visible. Below it is a link command acknowledging the header packet from the host. But you'll notice there are tens of thousands of link commands in every trace. So the software provides a very easy mechanism for hiding the redundant link commands. This allows you to see just the logical USB packets. These buttons over here allow you to decode up the logical protocol layers for USB. Clicking on the transaction button changes the display to show logical transactions that occurred in this trace. I'm going to hide the NACT transactions, and then you'll be able to see that we are reorganizing the traffic to show the logical handshaking that occurs at the protocol layer. The transfer layer will show the logical transfers that occurred during the enumeration sequence. And if we go all the way up to the SCSI layer, we'll actually roll up the SCSI operations that occurred as the USB 3.0 host discovered the identity of the storage device we're attached to. You'll notice that we did not record a lot of the SCSI operations that occurred during enumeration because our snapshot capture filled up so quickly with flow control and link training packets. Now we'll take another capture and I'll use triggering to show you exactly how to capture more of the information you're interested in. Now, if you want to keep your trace, you'll want to do a file save. Otherwise, the analyzer will just overwrite it on the next recording. I'm just going to close the trace for now. We're going to bring up the recording options again. This time, we're going to choose Event Trigger. 
This setting tells the analyzer to wait for an event we specify and then stop the recording. The trigger slider is only available when you use the event trigger. If you'd like to see more traffic that occurs before the trigger, you would slide the bar to the right. If you want to see more traffic that occurs after the trigger, you would slide the bar to the left. Switching now to the miscellaneous USB 3 tab, you'll see we've created simple triggers in this dialog that allows you to check an individual item such as a start of header packet as the trigger event. The first start of header in either direction will automatically trigger the analyzer. There are other simple triggers that you can choose in this window, such as the start of a link command. Either one of these events now will trigger the analyzer. Simple error triggers are available in this window as well. If you want to trigger on an invalid CRC, simply check the box here. Likewise, if you wanted to trigger when the device has entered the U1 power save state, you can trigger on those events here as well. We'll just choose to trigger on the first start of header packet. This is simple but useful because after link training completes, the two sides will start exchanging data and transaction packets, which indicates they're in U0. I'll hit record and I'll go ahead and plug the device back into the analyzer. You'll notice it's triggered immediately. The right white bar is traffic being uploaded from the analyzer to the PC. Now if I go to the search menu, we have a go to trigger option that will put me very close to the actual trigger event actually puts a marker in the trace showing where the trigger occurred. And here is the LMP from the device that was the very first start of header packet in this trace. This first packet occurs right after the link training and here is your TS2s and it enters U0. Now we'll hide the link commands and some of the NAC transactions will decode all the way up to the SCSI operation layer. And you'll see that you're able to view the full enumeration sequence plus a lot more of the SCSI operations. This is because we're able to catch more data traffic and fewer training sequences. This is exactly why you'll need triggering to be able to catch more of the data you're interested in and uh, avoid capturing the traffic you're not interested in. Please download the next tutorial for more tips and tricks on the Voyager Analyzer.